we have to encourage a return to traditional moral values. Now it appears I've got a brand new nickname, the Wolfman, not the great Wolfman Jack. He used to be on radio many decades ago. I used to listen to him funny enough. And of course, if you saw George Lucas's American Graffiti, he was a prominent voice in that movie. And for me, he really carried that film. But yes, I've decided to join the Beard Club, growing a beard. I do not need a 40 year old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about a wrinkle in time. It wasn't made for him. This is Duke Nukem. If you're looking for a douchebag to save the day, then try Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. All right, now where are the babes? Hear what these famous people say about it so far. Alistair Cook. Unmatched to this day. Vincent, Vincent Price. It is a modern day horror story that has destroyed the lives of those possessed by its sinister power. Margaret Thatcher. Yeah! Noel Coward. Very enjoyable, unbelievable. A sort of dream. There's a few reasons why men like me do this. And of course, one of the benefits of growing a beard, you get to use awesome products like Hawkins and Brimble beard oil. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. And yes, you go through that awkward phase, you get a patchy beard, you're getting the moustache, you don't know what to do with it. Right now, I've got an idea what I want to do with this look, and it's not the complete look at the moment, but... Um, uh, but people in my comment section were saying, oh, we love the beard, dude. I'm like, I was really surprised to see that. So, you know what? I'm keeping it. It's not going away. I might do a combination of Kurt Russell and Tom, Tom Selleck's uh, moustaches and do something with that, perhaps. But honestly, like, I've been watching a few videos where when men grow beards it's out of depression or it's out of defiance. And I think the latter applies to me in that respect. There is a big following of men out there with beards and they have a reasons to do it and i'm doing it because i'm fed up of basically what's going on in society at the moment and uh, obviously you know if you've, you've been following my channel for a while you know that i'm just very much against the uh, the complete woke insanity of the far left at the moment online with what they're doing with films it makes me laugh that hollywood are just uh, moaning and groaning all the writers are on strike because oh we want a big we want bigger revenues from streaming and writing well if you start writing shit guys and girls and just write normal entertainment we might start to embrace your things again but i guess when people like jim caviezel have released a film like sound of freedom which is doing incredible money at the box office uh i, I just can't help but support stuff like that i'm trying to get a copy of that film to do a review for this channel but at the moment it's not even happening but today talking about something completely left field uh, some people have reached out to me and said, oh, why don't you talk about this on your video, on your, on your channel? And you know what? I am. I'm doing that right now. So, uh, you know, something that's kind of really close to me at the moment is um, I'm a single man. I haven't dated for a long time. Um, I don't think I'm going to go back to dating. Dating for me in the 1990s was so much fun. Oh, my God. I'll make a video about that for another time. But, you know, just my recollection about it in there it was just so much fun being a single male uh, buying gq magazine not just for the hot woman on the cover but you had good great or in fact fantastic grooming tips in there and again i've got to reiterate when we say grooming back in the 90s it's actually about male grooming taking care of your facial features your body your clothes your accessories and by the way, this watch is pretty shit, actually. I want to get an Amiga again, uh, secondhand, of course. But um, when I see headlines like this um, about the matriarchy just gaining attention through TikTok, and this is from February the 2nd, 2023 from the New York Post. And the headline here is, I caught a group of male co-workers commenting on my looks and I confronted them. So if you don't know the story about this, this vendor apparently caught a group of her male colleagues commenting about her looks i can't imagine why can you because look on face value she looks pretty attractive but the uh, the trained non-surgical eye me can see that she's had her lips collagened she's got her big wide anime eyes already i can see that's a red flag for insufferable female alerts you can see it right there so not just content with making that statement 
Of course, what does she do? She has to make a TikTok video about it. And if we go down here, we can have a quick listen to. Bearing in mind, this could be a wailing banshee in the waiting. So let's just see what she has to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, first of all, if we're going to continue working together, I want to work with a woman sales representative because I don't want to have to see locker room talk about myself when you're sharing screens. So if we're... So she wants to work with a female field representative and she doesn't want to hear men talking about her looks like a rune talk. Now, the thing is, we don't actually know what the men have actually forward, said. I would like to work with a account rep that's maybe a woman in the area so that we can move forward that way. I'm, I know that was a mistake, but I, I don't no, want to no, see that's, that's like, an inexcusable yeah, I, I just don't want to see like locker room talk about myself. So yes. if we could, no. I like the product. I know it's good, I know it's tried and true, but I just want to work with a woman like Moving Absolutely. Forward, if possible. Whatever! Uh, 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 yeah, do you know what? When I, when I see women like that, oh my god, I, I just think to myself, you want the attention, you want the spotlight to be on you, love. And yes, your male colleagues might have been saying things in the chit chat that they accidentally shared in the screen, but how bad was it? I mean, the, the men are apologizing in the video, which I think, guys, you know, if you're apologizing and your your behavior wasn't that reprehensible, if it was just like general PG-13 chit chat. Look, I've had people mocking my appearance as well, but I don't go on friggin' TikTok and make a video about it, do I? It's just part of human rationality and behavior. Now, we're always going to be critical of each other's features and looks, aren't we? It's it's a it's a it's a given product. It's a given trade, isn't it? That we're all going to do that. So when you have women like her, Whitney Rose 617 saying, oh, my God, can you stop? I want to feel representative that to be female. I don't want men to be in my court. How do you know the female rep that you hire won't also criticize you? It's a worrying trend that I see these days actually with young women where they have to have collagen filled lips or they plump their skin up. Like it is, that's why I think plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery is quite uh, immoral in that respect because you can just go and get these things done to yourself. The doctor wants their, their money at the end of the day. They're not going to question your mental illness that much do you know what i mean so which brings me on to this topic here now i saw a video uh, about this where uh, this lady called uh, rajvi shah 30 on twitter I i've checked her profile out she seems okay she just has general chit chatting about various aspects of life i think she lives in india but this particular post apparently went viral back on april the 14th of this year uh, where she says, I was talking to a female friend and she was telling me how lonely it is for her to be working with only men in her team because they all maintain a respectful distance from her as they don't want to come off as creeps, not realizing it's completely isolating. And her friend says, I think, or I would think in this case, your friend needs to break the ice. Uh, Rajfi replies, uh, she did that many times. They still continue their behavior of ignoring her. Now, what I'll say about this is I have been in a situation back in 2012 where I worked in an HR office in London where uh, about 70% of that team were female and I would say 30% were men. In fact, I'll actually say the ratio was higher than that. And it was okay. I mean, this is 2012. So I didn't really question it that much. I just thought, oh, okay, it's, it's women in the office. There are a few good looking women, I have to say, but that's kind of where I drew the line. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I did, you know, I, I did, at that time, that culture, you, you kind of had to force yourself to ingratiate your presence with that company. And, and then of course, the year, a year later, that didn't really pay off because in fact, those same female colleagues because we had a new female deputy director overlooking our agency. Um, that director knew that she wanted to uh, be more with her sisterhood and ignore the brotherhood. So all the hard work that we were doing in tandem, the men were getting ignored for, but the females were getting recognition, monetary recognition. And I was disgusted and I was sickened by that. 
And that was one of the things that made me leave that agency in the end. I thought that was deplorable. Like, how come you're taking the same credit the men do, but you're getting monetary recognition, which I think is... Uh, it really makes my blood boil. But going back to this uh, lady here, uh, Rajvi Shah, what I'll say about her situation is, well, men don't want to associate with female colleagues with a culture of cancellation of men, good men being bad. But apparently, even if a man is good, you still want to call him out because he's ignoring you. And that, look, I've got to speak from a personal perspective, right? I've been in that awful situation from 2017 to 2018 where I've been. In fact, I'd even go back as far as maybe the late 2000s where I've had an office relationship with a woman. Doesn't go well. It ends up terrible. Oh, my God. Like, don't ever go there, fellas. Do not date a woman at work. It's it doesn't have the same kind of charm to it like it used to many, many years ago. It always ends up bad. The phrase I was given was don't dip your pen in the company ink. And it's so true. Never, ever do that. And, you know, the reason why these guys st st just stay the distance from women, because these guys have their own agenda. I mean, for me personally, I'm, I'm a film enthusiast. I, I play video games. I I'm, I'm more passionate about comic books than I've ever been. Like the old stuff from Marvel and Image Comics, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Tom DeFalco, all these amazing people who, who created my childhood who made me the man that I am today. And uh, I, I'm, I'm more invested in that. But can you imagine me talking to a female colleague that I've never met before in the office about that? She would fall asleep in about three seconds. And honestly, who could blame her? So it's not just like, it's, it's men being very careful. I mean, if look, Henry Cavill, one of the most bro dudes out there. He was criticized by the Me Too movement simply because he said, a woman should be wooed and chased. It's difficult to do that if there are certain rules in place. And the man is absolutely spot on with that. Of course he is. I mean, he's got himself a girlfriend now, an Italian uh, film producer, I believe. She's working on the Warhammer show with him for Amazon. And let's hope that goes well. But honestly, when it comes to being a single man, or you might not even be single. You might have a beautiful wife and kids, but you don't want to bring them out into the public laundry for your friends to talk about you. There's a certain amount of pressure that if you're a male colleague in an office and if it, if it happens to be heavily female dominated, uh, there's a pressure for you to come forth and declare your private laundry out in public. And you don't want to do that, do you? I certainly don't want to do that. Um, I'm a single guy. Uh, um, I don't feel the need to be with a woman. Why? I've had my friends saying to me, well, maybe you should go to Thailand. And of course, there are some jokes to be said about that particular um, <laughs> country. <laughs> so long, gay boys. In terms of what they're known for. Uh, or, you know, make meet a Filipino woman. She'll look after you. Um, to be honest, I mean, they're, they're tempting ideas. Um, I'm a self-sufficient man. My, I can look after myself. I don't need a woman to do things for me. And I like my privacy, you know? I, you know, there's, there's certain things that a man takes pride in that he doesn't want a woman to see. And, you know, going back to my ill-fated office relationships of 2017, 2018, yeah, I, I definitely do need my head examined for the choice of woman who found me attractive. Okay, thank you, Roy. You're welcome, Judy. Oh, I'm not Judy, I'm Julie. Judy! Someone to see you. This man says you should take his card. <laughs> I saw it as an ego boost for my patriarchal male ego. I did see that. And I got gifts in return. I got food given to me. I had clothes and accessories bought for me. But really, I shouldn't have encouraged it, and I was just a bad guy for doing that. Yes, I am the bad guy, and I admit that wholeheartedly. If I could do things all over again, just ignore it and say, listen, I appreciate the flattery, but this is not a good idea, and move on. And, you know, what it told me about, about, about women, generally, who are married, by the way, and uh, I would say, yes, I, I, I did go to bed with this woman, but that's all I did. I went to bed with her. I actually snored on one side of the bed, and she snored on the other. 
nothing else happened, which is great. So, <laughs> so when you hear the term sleeping with a woman, it could literally mean just sleeping with a woman. No intercourse involved. And that was hilarious because by that point, it was just so ridiculous. I, I saw the ridiculousness in that, that union. That there was not there wasn't gonna be anything else. So <laughs> We have to celebrate the image of Patrick Bateman because when you look at American Psycho, that guy is the poster boy for the patriarchy going forward. Yeah, work out. Enjoy your Huey Lewis in the news. Take care of yourself. Or in my case, I'm taking care of myself in a different way. I'm, I'm letting my facial hair grow wild. Hell, I might even let my hair grow, grow wild and see where that takes me. So, gentlemen, and yes, I am saying that wholeheartedly, and ladies, because I know some ladies have subscribed to my channel. If you enjoy this rather different take today, make sure you leave a like. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're no longer or new to my channel. And if I were you, and if you were me, you better come back for the next video. I remember somebody threatening me on the street because some people did object to the film getting made and all that. And I remember people saying that they were going to do me harm and stuff like that, you know. And I would actually go like, I remember somebody, somebody warned me. It must have been a friend of mine who was crazy early on the internet. And they warned me, they called me up and they went, there's some person and they know where you walk every single day and you go down this back alley and they say that they're going to jump on you and they're going to rip your cerebral cortex out of your head. So please don't go down that alley. So of course, I was like, I'm going to that alley. Alley. I want to see what happens. And unfortunately, nothing. I kept walking up and down it going, where are they? Come on. What's <laughs> but nothing ever happened. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. The First Amendment and boobs. So those are the only two things I believe in absolutely in the country.